Winter weather has swept over much of the country. Provo, Utah, certainly inclusive in that category. Tonight, Friday night NCAA gymnastics indoor at the Smith Field House. A mid-season non-conference showdown between the Iowa Hawkeyes and the BYU Cougars. The Cougs looking to make a statement against a nationally ranked program tonight on BYU TV. NCAA Women's Gymnastics live on BYU TV. The 17th ranked Iowa Hawkeyes moving up in the latest top 25 poll. They're on the road to take on the BYU Cougars in Provo from the Smithfield House. Welcome everyone, wherever and however you're dialed in. Great to have you with us on BYU TV tonight alongside former gymnastics standout Mikkel Merkley. I am Spencer Linton. In a perfect world, Mikkel, you would see progress each and every week. Scores would go up, teams would always get better, but that obviously does not happen on a week-to-week -week basis, especially when you have a lot of youth in the lineup, and that has been the case for BYU, who's searching for consistency. A lot of youth, their whole team consists of about half freshmen. There is a learning curve associated with coming from club gymnastics to college gymnastics. You're going from competing as an individual to a team. There's just a lot of differences. As we start to see those differences work themselves out, more experience come in, I think we will start to see the scores consistently rise. And we can certainly look at the polished performers, which are our Aaron Impact players, brought to you by Aaron Rentals, offering commercial and residential high equipment with more than 80 locations nationwide. Aaron Rentals since 1953. For the nationally ranked Hawkeyes, it's Angel Metcalf leading the way in that leadership role. Yes, this senior has a lot of veteran experience. She scored a 9-9 or better on every single event in her career, which brings a huge score to the team. We're going to see her on bars and beam tonight. And we're hoping to see those big scores from her. And for BYU, the experienced Jill Van Mierlo amidst all of that youth, a lot of her teammates look to her to lead the way. Yes, we've really missed Jill. She was a standout freshman, suffered some injuries as a sophomore, but she's been very diligent with her physical therapy and getting back in the gym. We're excited to see her again tonight in the all-around. She brings a ton of experience and leadership to this young team, as you mentioned before. Taking a look at the Smith Fieldhouse just moments before we begin competition and time for our keys to the meet. Brought to you by Smith Auto of Spanish Fork. Smith Auto Company, a family tradition since 1924. I imagine at some point in these keys, we will see hits and sticks, right, Miguel? <laughs> That's a pretty safe bet. That is, yes, very important <laughs> to gymnastics. Um, we do have stick stuck landings. It doesn't matter if you hit a perfect routine, if you take a giant big old step at the end, then that's going to be a two to three tenth deduction. And that can really affect your team score. We also have, we, the girls need to hit five clean sets. If you have four girls hit 10 O's and your last two girls fall all over themselves and score eight fives, you're not going to do well. And I think that's one of the consistency problems that we've been seeing with BYU is that they've been able to put up four great scores every single meet, and then that fifth one's just a little bit iffy. The Hawkeyes just jumped five spots in the latest top 25 halt to number 17. BYU trying to stun one of their Big Ten opponents this season. Let's take a look at the opening lineup for BYU on vault. As with every home meet, the Cougars begin here. And the lineup goes like this. Love, Zong, Hill, Portman, Van Mierlo in that five spot, and Mackenzie Douglas, the high flyer, to anchor BYU in rotation number one. And on the uneven bars for the visitors from Iowa. Snyder to lead things off, followed by Kahi Mura Sullivan, Angel Metcalf, as we mentioned, is a gymnast to watch, somebody that does a lot of good things for this program. And Zorowski will anchor Iowa in rotation number one. So there you have the starting lineups for the Open here in Provo, Utah, between BYU and Iowa. As I mentioned earlier, this is a non-conference showdown. BYU member of the Mountain Room Gymnastics Conference. Iowa coming out of the Big Ten. At this point of the season, where are the emotions for a young team like BYU knowing 
that on paper they're outmatched tonight, Mikkel. You know, with gymnastics, it doesn't matter as much as you'd think. And like in football, basketball, those other sports, there's a defense and there's an offense. And in gymnastics, there's none of that. It doesn't matter, you know, Iowa, one of the Iowa girls is not going to go push one of the BYU girls off the beam. BYU is not going to loosen the bars to make one of them fall. You just get out and you do your routine the exact same no matter who you're competing against. Lauren Love to lead us off tonight's live NCAA gymnastics coverage. Set to go, she receives the go ahead from the scoring judges and Love will make her approach to the vault. Love really worked getting back fast. There we go, into the vault last year, and we're seeing a big improvement in the distance she's getting from the table. Judges care a lot about how high and how far you can get from the table. They want to see that amplitude and distance. Lauren is, one of her coaches have been talking about how Lauren just worked that really, really hard, and she's made great strides since last season. Love with just the one step back right there. Minor deduction expected will await her score. As we take a look at Lainey Snyder, career best 985 on the uneven bars and the first to compete tonight for the Hawkeyes in black and gold. On bars, we're going to be looking for good handstands. The handstands are going to be completely upside down. Big releases as the ones we just saw there. There's going to be a major release done by each gymnast, which is typically done on the one bar, the high bar, and then there will be the minor release or the transitional release done from a high bar to a low bar. Really great set. She hit everything she needed to. Huge dismount. That double front is a blind landing. She cannot see her landing until she's already made it. This is her Jaeger. That's her major release connected right to her transitional release. And on this dismount, you're going to see her feet will hit, and then she sees where the ground is. Front dismounts are very difficult, and they are worth a little more in the judge's eyes. All right, Lauren Love leading off BYU with a solid 9.75 on vaults. She will give way to Angel Zong, who has a season and career best. Just a little bit better than that. Also, great sense of humor from Angel. We'll talk more about that <laughs> later tonight. Here she is on vault. Great vault. She looked a little crooked uh, at the beginning. I was a little nervous. If you are not centered in the mat, that is a deduction. It looks like she figured it out in the air and strained herself up. You'll see she kind of hits on the left side of that board. But when she lands, she's able to center herself quite well. Angel Zong awaiting first score. By the way, Lauren Love on beam for BYU tied her career high with that 9.75. Uh, excuse me, on vault. Tied her career high with that 9.75. We are awaiting the first score for Iowa on the uneven bars for Lainey Snyder. Cheyenne Hill will compete next on vault for the Cougars. And on the bars is Claire Kaji. Snyder with a 9.8. Good start for Iowa. In watching Claire during warm-ups, I was so impressed with her handstands and her beautiful form. Every handstand she did in warm-ups was completely upside down. You can be within 10 degrees of a handstand and not receive a deduction, but so much more impressive if you can hit that handstand right on top. A little riskier though, because you do risk falling over. Kaji with a successful release move. Oh. That release is called a pack. It is a little more difficult. If you don't hit right on top, you can just slip right off. It's really hard to finish your routine once you've fallen. We're going to see a replay here. You'll see she just wasn't quite. Oh, shoot. It looks like her hands are on, and then they just slip right off. When you fall, your job is to get back up and finish as if you didn't fall because we don't know what the rest of the girls are going to do. She's going for a 9-5 here. A fall is a 5 10 deduction, so a 9-5 would be the very highest she could possibly score. And she did such a great job. Really focused, stuck that landing, didn't give anything else away. One more look at that fall as she made the transition between bars. The 
release move was clean, looked good, and then... You'll see her hands are just back a little too far. You do want... The grip has something on it called a dowel. You want the dowel on the back of the bar. Her dowel was on top of the bar, maybe even to the front a little bit. There's really no... There's nothing she could have done to save it once that happened. In college gymnastics, the low score in each rotation is dropped. That just mounts the pressure, however, on the rest of Claire Codge's teammates to come up and perform without any major gaffes. Cheyenne Hill now for BYU. And that falls what we were talking about at the beginning. If you have a bunch of girls hit, but you have two falls, you have to count those two falls. Great vault from Cheyenne. Cheyenne does such a great job keeping her body totally laid out in the air. The judges are looking for that. They don't want to see Pike down at the end. You'll see she's just so tight. She can see the ground before she lands, which facilitates a good landing, a good stick. Opened up just a smidge too soon. If she'd stayed in just a little bit longer, she wouldn't have had to have that little tiny hop. Yeah, a little great bit of side vault. hop there, but uh, overall, great vault. Yeah, great vault. Cheyenne Hill being congratulated by her teammates and coaching staff as we await the score from Claire Kaji who had the unfortunate fall as the second competitor on the bars for Iowa. Lexi Mura is the third to compete for Iowa on the bars. We mentioned earlier we're going to be looking for handstands, the big release, the transitional release. We're also going to be looking for skills to be connected. Uh, we always talk about how the routine's out of a 10. It's kind of a trick. The routine's really not out of a 10. It's out of a 9.5, and you have to earn bonus 5 tenths through either throwing really big skills or connections. Guard Young, the head coach at BYU in his second season, very excited about the prospect of growing his program because so many young competitors are getting valuable experience early in their respective gymnastics careers. But it is... It does require a lot of patience, and sometimes it's hard to be patient when you're a guy that comes from the prestige of the University of Oklahoma and that men's program and winning national championships, and not to mention his silver medal with Team USA. <laughs> he, he expects perfection, and it's hard to be patient for that with a young team. It is. These girls are receiving, it's almost a gift to these freshmen. A lot of times, if you have a strong upper class, you don't see competition time until a little later in your career. These girls will be very, very good as upperclassmen because of the experience they're receiving now. Score in for Claire Kaji is a 9.15. Five tenths, as Mikkel mentioned, automatic deduction for that fall. And now her teammate, Lexi Mura. Good save on that handstand. This connection right here is what we were talking about earlier. She does that toe on toe off right into her major release. That will be a 10th bonus. That's the same release move we just saw from Claire. You can see how she's able to get her hands over the bar a little bit better and really hold on to that. Setting up for the dismount. Big dismount here. Wow. So consistent on that. I don't think I've seen her miss a single one during warm ups. That's a very big dismount. A needed confidence boost for the Hawkeyes after that fall from Claire Kaji, Lexi Mura delivering. You'll see she's able to get her hands on the very back side of that bar away from her and it allows her as she swings through to have a good grip. You'll see how high she gets above the bar. Really confident on these landings. Much appreciated routine by her teammates. Cheyenne Hill in with a 9.75, following up Angel Zong's 9.8. Here is one of the freshman revelations for guard young squad BYU, Shannon Ortman. So close for the stick. That ball is so difficult. Again, we talked about if you're coming in from the front instead of doing a back landing, it's a blind landing. She can't see where the floor is until her feet have already hit. Shannon has great air awareness. We'll see that on the other events tonight as well. Wow, you see just a little bit of a sidestep, much like from Cheyenne Hill, but this on a blind landing. 
it looks like she was really focusing on the stick. Sometimes if we focus on the stick too much, it's hard. If we do a great vault, the landing will come. Sometimes we get really excited though, and just want to really nail that landing down. I think if she just relaxed a little bit, she probably would have known where the floor was a little easier and being able to have a solid landing. Mura with a 9.725. Honestly, that's a little lower than I thought it would be. Yeah, it is a little bit lower than I thought it would be as well. It could be following a fall. Sometimes the scores do drop, unfortunately. Just kind of how it works in gymnastics. Charlotte Sullivan. Big release from Charlotte. Charlotte does a lot of those connections as well. You'll see she does one before her big release. She did the one before the major release, the minor release. And then she's also going to do one here before her dismount. International freshman out of New Zealand. Charlotte comes from an elite background, which is a little different than most of the girls. Most college gymnasts come from the level 10 club world. She comes from elite. She said she's just really loved being in the college setting and all the teammates and how fun college has been so far for her. She's having a good time after that routine for sure. Charlotte Sullivan has a clean routine for Iowa. Hortman in with the high score thus far for BYU on vault with a 9.825. That ties the career high of Jill Van Mierlo, who is set for the vault now. Really good vault from Jill. She's been doing well all season, but was further up in the lineup rotation. Coaches have moved her a little further back in rotation, hoping that to get a little more respect from the judges. She's doing a good job in that further spot. Hands are a little crooked on the vault. Her right hand was in front of the left hand a little bit. Makes it hard to have a good block, but she did a good job recovering from that. Now, interesting that you would mention the politics of moving a gymnast <laughs> down in the rotation. You feel like that really has a factor on the judge's mentality? You know, it kind of does. The judges know that coaches are expecting the scores to rise. So the idea is you put someone who's very consistent and can start the team off just a nice, strong routine, but maybe not the highest scoring, not the flashiest. So the judges know that, and they're expecting to see better as they go. And gymnastics is very subjective. Certainly is that. The judges have liked Angel Metcalf, who is on the uneven bars right now a lot. You can see why. Beautiful double lay. All these double lays, a lot of the Iowa girls are competing that. You want to see the body totally straight. You don't want to see it go really arched and then really piped. Look at the release move and then the dismount. Very open the entire time. Nothing to deduct on that. Which is exactly what we want to see, especially midpoint in the season. We should be perfecting our skills, really looking to perform well instead of just getting through the meets. Jill Van Mierlo with a 9775. That brings up Mackenzie Douglas, who is very bouncy as a gymnast. <laughs> she is very bouncy in a good way. She has the only 10 0 vault for BYU right now. Sidestep across with that right foot, but you can see it is a loaded vault. You'll see a lot of the girls do it in a do their vaults in a totally stretched position. Doug does hers in a tucked position. The tuck one and a half is worth more than the straight bodied full. Kenzie Douglas with a clean vault. Some minor deductions for sure, and we await her score. But BYU through the vault with uh, no major gaffes. And that brings us to the final competitor on the uneven bars for Iowa, Melissa Zorowski. We're going to see Melissa does a great job with her connections that we've been talking about, all bars. She actually connects a giant full to her ginger to her transitional release. And there you're taking a look at all that. 
she gets all of her bonus in the very beginning. So she's able to do a little bit easier of a dismount. She's gonna do just a plain double back, nice tuck position, very safe, a little easier to stick. They won't quite count that as a stick. You have to show that you have control. They might take a little bit of a deduction on that, but very clean set. Zorowski. And her teammate, Claire Kaji, breathing a sigh of relief, knowing that despite her fall, it won't create a major deduction <laughs> in this rotation. That is one of the best parts about college gymnastics is that you are competing as a team. In club gymnastics, it's just you. If you mess up, it's on you. If you do great, it's on you. In college gymnastics, someone always has your back. Exhibition routine on the vault for BYU's Hannah Miller. This will not count for the team score, but does offer much needed experience in front of a crowd to get uh, the gymnasts acclimated to performing in front of uh, a lot of people. You know, Hannah has always been an option in lineup, and Brogan says we'll be seeing a lot more of her in the coming years. She's ready to step in whenever needed. And it's great that BYU has a full, a Yurchenko full, competing as an exhibition spot. A lot of times you can't even get that many to compete, let alone having a bonus one. Says a lot about the depth of BYU's vault lineup. Maria Ortiz with an exhibition routine for Iowa on the uneven bars. Great handstands. Her routine, she does a little bit backwards. Usually, most gymnasts want to do their major release first, get it over with, it's a little bit harder. She does it at the end, so that, probably so she doesn't have to do an extra pirouetting type move. Maria Ortiz meets an entourage of smiles and high fives after her successful exhibition routine. We'll tally up the first rotation scores, come back with those in just a minute. Good crowd on hand in the Smithfield House to watch Friday night gymnastics. BYU back on their home floor. Stay with us on BYU TV for more. BYU Gymnastics on BYU TV is brought to you by Ahern Equipment Rentals. Your next job is our priority. Brady Industries, clean solutions, a tradition for generations. And by the BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Gymnastics on BYU TV is brought to you by Smith Auto Company, a family tradition since 1924. Deseret First Credit Union, sharing your values. And by DexterLaw.com for help when you need it most. Our BYU Sports History Showcase brought to you by the BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Rewind to February 26, 2010. <laughs> Look at who's on the uneven bars oh, for gosh. BYU, our own Mikael Merkley. One of the greatest pretty uneven bar Back performances ever. What do you, I, you critique yourself? <laughs> critique. critique. I'm awesome. Bit, I am so good. I mean, it probably should have got a 10. I'm just saying. I know, it was a little, a little shaky a little on that there. handstand, but look at that look dismount, at that Mikkel. Look at that dismount. <laughs> okay, are you, are you, are you embarrassed right now? A little bit. I didn't know this was His happening. Cheeks are getting awfully I rosy know. right now. I feel like I should have <laughs> heads up there. No, there's no heads up there. That's what makes this <laughs> wonderful and unexpected, right? By the way, you got a 9-8 on that routine. Excellent. You, you thought it should have been a 10. No, I mean, there were some pretty obvious deductions. <laughs> Our game summary presented by Desert First Credit Union. Desert First, your values, your timeline, your financial future. Look at this score as a team for BYU on the vault, a 49. Yeah, they dropped a 9.75. That's a that's a great score to be dropping. I don't believe. Did we look it up? Did, have they scored that yet this season? Yeah, unofficially, that is the high score for BYU in a vault rotation. Such a this great season. opening. 49 flat. Iowa not far behind that team score thus far with a 48.975. They dropped Claire Kaji's 9.15 but they are certainly helped out by a 9.85 from Angel Metcalf. We've become accustomed to that. And 
her high-level performance, as well as Zorowski with the 9-8. I mean, their lowest score is a 9-7-2-5 that they're counting. So despite having the fall, still a great bar set for Iowa tonight. Rotation number two, vault lineup for the visitors. Carlson, Sullivan, and Zorowski in the one, two, three spots. Pierkowski will vault fourth, followed by Maria Ortiz, and Yaud is the anchor. Bars lineup for the BYU Cougars as they hold the slimmest of margins of a lead after one rotation. Natasha Trejo. Mackenzie Douglas will compete second. Jill Van Mirlo in the three spot. Hortman, Haas, and Jesse Westergaard the anchor on this event for BYU. It's such a confidence builder going into the next event when you have hit the event before. You're already on such a high, and you just have to continue that energy right into the next event. Both teams feeling pretty good after those solid first rotation scores. And both of these teams coming off less than ideal performances according to their own standards. BYU fell short in a head-to-head -head meet with 13th ranked Southern Utah. They scored a 194.45, which when you look at it, isn't a terrible score per se, Mikhail. Not a terrible score. Guard definitely has higher standards. He would have been expecting higher scores than the 194 range at this point in the season. Wow, what a great what vault. A vault. That was an incredible landing. Look at this vault. Totally laid out. You see, she just sees the ground, opens right up when she... I love it when they run off all excited. Misty Jade Carlson. <laughs> to open up with such a strong vault like that, we did talk about there is, there is a technique to getting the higher scores. When you start off with a vault like that, that's going to score well. If you can just keep the scores going up and up and up every time, they're going to have a record-breaking night for themselves on vault. Natasha Trejo. Natasha Trejo, season and career best 9-8 on the uneven bars. First time we are seeing her compete tonight for BYU. Multifaceted star for Guard Young's team. Great to caught, Jeff. That is her major release, and then we see that clear hip into the shoot over for that connection bonus. Sure, it's just a tiny bit short, but very, very tight. Natasha is such a consistent performer. The girls can really rely on her to hit, and that double layout is huge. Just like we were talking about earlier, we want to see it totally laid out. No piking, no mid no piking down, no arching later. A little bit of a bent leg on that to Kotjev. I'm not sure if in regular speed, if that was noticeable by the judges. If you were scoring that opening routine, Mikkel, what would you give it? I want to see how close you are to what the see, judges come up with. I'd say in the 9-7 range, there was the bent knee, there was the little bit of a short handstand, and there was the tiny hop. High 9-7s high is my guess. All right. We're going to hold you to that. A little that. bit of a hop there. And a 9-8-5 from Misty Jade Carlson. Well-deserved. Here's Charlotte Sullivan. Great vault. There's that blind landing we talked about earlier. The judges do seem to be rewarding those blind landings tonight. We should be able to see a high score from her. Wow. Great amplitude, too. Sullivan hoping I... to take advantage of that difficult vault and follow up a 9-8-5 to begin. Yes, ideally, we want to see when we're watching the vaults, we want to see them complete the entire twist above vault height and then have the rest of the time to focus on their landings. It is a deduction in amplitude if they are still twisting as they get closer to the ground. Carlson, the first to vault, tied her career best with that 9.85. We're awaiting the bar score. For Natasha Trejo, there is Larissa Libby head coach of Iowa Gymnastics in her 13th season. And as I was mentioning, coming off a score as a team that wasn't too pleased with, 194.2 finished third in a tri-meet at LSU. Natasha Trejo, as you called it, 
9775. I Cal. am the gymnastics expert here. <laughs> <Spencer>. <laughs> hey, no question about that. <laughs> Zero argument there. Here is Mackenzie Douglas. Mackenzie's just really been working on her form the last couple years, and it's really showing. It really is showing. She is a very tall gymnast. Any knee bend that she has, it all looks a lot bigger than it really is. When we watch these replays, you're going to see she's just squeezing everything really tight and really focusing on hitting those handstands. Such great control in her bar change. You'll see she hits the handstand and is able to put her foot right on without any bobbling back and forth. Sometimes there's a little bit of a twist. She doesn't do any of that. A dismount, you can see She's going to try and sell this stick right here and address the judges <laughs> going back with the right foot. There is a sneakiness involved with the sticking the landing sometimes. <laughs> you want to, even if you know, if you're like, yeah, the judges know I didn't stick that, you're going to try and minimize your deductions as much as, as, much as possible by turning as quickly as you can to them. 9-8-2-5 for Charlotte Sullivan. Another big, another big score for Iowa including the opener from Misty Jade Carlson of a 9.85. Here's Melissa Zorowski. Iowa looking to make a move here in rotation number two against BYU Zorowski. To Melissa vault. does a great job opening up early. Holy moly, these vaults. Three for three. We, we were talking earlier about how you need to finish the spin really fast so you have a lot of time to land. You'll see she does her vault, blocks off, spins as fast as she can, and then actually flares her arms out to the sides. Oh, what a vault. That will score very, very well. I saw her teammate, Rose Pierkowski, who's going to vault next, mouth the words, that was pretty nice. <laughs> and when you can impress your teammates like that. They see you every day. They're that's very good, hard right? to impress. Absolutely. Mackenzie Douglas in with a 9.75. Respectable Two. score in that two spot. And the uneven bars rotation, but Iowa, wow. Stealing the show here in rotation number two on vault. Three stick landings on three vaults. Jill Van Mierlo. Huge Jager from Jill. Everything that, ye that Jill does on bars is just big and tight. She always has a lot of amplitude there. There's not necessarily a deduction for throwing the skills safely. You know, you can throw them a little closer to the bar, get away with it, but she doesn't take that. She goes for the wrist and has very impressive skills in that way. We talked about consistency being a struggle for BYU this season thus far. Looking great. Through the vault, they, they have been very consistent. Already you posted can see a 49 how high vault. she is on that. Yeah. Solid performance overall Again, from BYU. Look at how high she is above that bar. Just big, big skills. Back to the vault. Zorowski equals Sullivan's 9825. Three vaults all over 98. And here is Rose Pierkowski, who was the one mouthing the that was pretty <laughs> nice. About Zorowski's vault. And here's Pierkowski. That vault was huge. It was probably a little bit bigger than she even expected, which I think is what led to that large step on the landing. That was probably the highest vault we've seen of the night. Oh, wow. And we've been spoiled with stuck landing, <laughs> so it's like, hey, what happened there? <laughs> but she huge. makes up for it in a lot of other ways. Yeah, great shaping. It is unfortunate about the landing because it does seem like if you finish off with a strong landing, you do tend to score a little better regardless. But that was a great, great vault. Van Mierlo in with a 9.8 even. And as you just heard the public address announcer in the Smithfield House say it, we welcome Shannon Hortman to the uneven bars. Shannon is so versatile in her bar routine. She actually has enough skills for two totally separate routines, just depending on how it looks, what's most consistent. And you'll see she has fabulous handstands. Everything she does is just crisp and dynamic. Very pleasing to look at. 
great routine. That was amazing. You can see why this is what we were talking about. She's a little bit further back in lineup. She just doesn't give the judges a lot to take. Huge ginger right there. Lots of amplitude, nice and high. Body totally straight on these dismounts. Tiny bit of a pike in, but I don't think we'd see that if it wasn't in slow motion. Clean routine from Shannon Hortman, who has been the Mountain Rim Gymnastics Conference Gymnast of the Week multiple times this season as a freshman. Pirakowski with that big step, awarded a 9.6. Reminder that the low score in each rotation was dropped in the team competition. Maria Ortiz certainly capable of throwing down a huge vault. Oh, and she holds on. <laughs> she will be deducted for having her chest down on the landing. That little wobble. But that was such a great fight. She twisted a little early off the vault. You want to have a good repulsion and then get a good block and stand up before you twist. She twisted a little early, which might have led to, you can see she's almost pushing with one hand before it even gets there, which might have led to that lower landing. But such a great fight. It's so great to see that in the gymnast, not willing to give up anything that they don't have to. Listen, when you start using words like repulsion, <laughs> We need to calm you down a little bit. <laughs> Portman with a 9.875. That's a new career high on the bars for the BYU freshman. And that brings us to the Mountain Rim Gymnastics Conference Specialist of the Week, Brittany Haas. This is the only event she competes in. She's dealt with a rash of injuries her career, but just put up a 9.95 last Such week. Such a huge score. You can see, wow. look at that right there. Those are those handstands we're talking about. You can be within 10 degrees technically. But you hit that handstand, it looks so good. She takes her role as the bar specialist very seriously. I know that she'd like to contribute more, but her body has just been through a lot and done. And so she makes sure that she gives it. Oh, no way. She gives it all she can every single meet. That was such a big dismount. Watch the opening handstand from Brittany Haas. Again, she put up a 9.95 on this event in her Such last performance. Such great control. It is, it is so scary to do a handstand like that because you're not 100% sure if you're going to fall over or not. I, not even a flinch on the landing. That was beautiful. Another big score expected for Brittany Haas. Perhaps 9.875. 9-9? I'd like to see 9-9 range. Okay, all right. I really, the only thing I saw the whole time was a little baby, baby deduction on the shoot over. I feel like everything else looks fabulous. Nikki Yao on the vault for Iowa. Career best of a 9-9. Good vault from Nikki Yao. That was a good vault. Not quite as open as some of her teammates have done. She is, this is a newer event for her to be competing this season. You'll see she has a little bit of a pike in the air. Well, it's really hard because you have all this adrenaline and the whole event lasts about a half second. So you have all these changes that you're trying to make and just stay perfect and calm. And then all of a sudden it's over. So sometimes you can make little weird mistakes like doing a pike in your layout, just trying to compensate and get used to that adrenaline. All right, so some drop off for Iowa on the vault, but BYU picking things up. Haas with a 9925. You're two That's for two right. tonight. I called these tonight. Uh, uh, that was a great score. 9925. Jesse Westergaard, the anchor performer. The BYU on the uneven bars, the Cougars. Jesse's also very capable of being in the 9 9 range. Easy. Great. She's given away nothing so far. She has a huge dismount. The double front it is a blind landing. As we've talked about, those blind landings have been rewarded tonight. She's a little step back with that right foot. Not quite the landing she was looking for. It is a hard dismount. The rest of the routine, though, there were no deductions. Through two Great routines, step. the energy good for BYU. You can see it in their body language and on their faces. Just held on a smidge, smidge too long. It's so hard in gymnastics because a millisecond makes the biggest difference. She really didn't hold on too long, but just enough to not be able to stick that. Guard Young living the routines <laughs> with his gymnasts. 
And uh, this is the pink night for the gymnastics team, remembering those that are suffering from cancer, specifically breast cancer awareness night. So Cougars are donning their pink uniforms, and uh, we know that it affects so many people. We send our thoughts and prayers to all those families and friends of ours that are uh, dealing with uh, that horrible cancer disease. And, but uh, we, we add our cause and our are cheering on to those that uh, are dealing with that. BYU, perhaps the best thing they can do tonight to honor those that are suffering with this show up and perform well, and they have done just that, Mikel. I mean, it has been the to this point job. the most consistent meet of the season. They um. The trainer when I was there, Gay Merrill, she suffered from breast cancer and ultimately passed away right after my senior year. And while these girls didn't know her, all three coaches had her as a trainer. So I think it hits a little closer to home for the BYU team tonight than would be ideal. No one really wants that, but it is a great way to remember Gay and all that she did for all the BYU athletes that she's helped over the years. Yeah, assistant coach Brogan Evanson said the following about Gay. She was one of those people that did so much for the athletes she had stewardship over. She was loving, kind, and good at her job. She dedicated her life to serving student athletes. She did those little things that added up and made a big difference. Great tribute to Gay Merrill as part of this pink meet in Provo, Utah, totaling up the scores. After rotation number two, our score box sponsor, Brady Industries, provider of commercial cleaning supplies and equipment throughout the Western United States for over 65 years. Brady Industries, clean solutions, a tradition for generations. The Iowa Hawkeyes will drop the 9.6 from Pierkowski. They will include that 9.675 from Ortiz, and they take just under a 49 again with that 48.95. So through two, the Hawkeyes still in good shape to make a run at that overall score of 196, where they have been a number of times this season. They have scored well into the 196s. Yeah, they've had a great season so far. That's why they're ranked 17th in the country. <laughs> so that's another one of those that's always ready to step in on bars whenever she's needed. This is a great set. It's so great to have a consistent competitor as your number seven girl. Savannah Maradiaga. A little hard to tell from this angle. It looked like she was pretty close to the high bar on that dismount. She had a great job sticking with it and not panicking and doing a great landing. A lot of times when you get close to that high bar, it's kind of scary and you open up a little early. She really stuck with it. Second rotation officially wrapped up here in Provo, Utah. BYU and Iowa, NCAA Women's Gymnastics on a Friday night. We have a great meet going. Stay with us. BYU Gymnastics on BYU TV is brought to you by Ahern Equipment Rentals. Your next job is our priority. Brady Industries, clean solutions, a tradition for generations. And by the BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Welcome back to Provo, Utah. A reminder that tomorrow, the showdown between Gonzaga and BYU, West Coast Conference women's basketball, two of the perennial powers, and quickly becoming a rivalry, the women's hoop side of things. Tomorrow, 4 Eastern, live on BYU TV. That's a two-mounted tip. I'll be on the call with Kristen Kozlowski. Regular season finale before the teams head to Las Vegas for the West Coast Conference Tournament. Your vault score for Iowa, 48.95. Showed that to you just before we went to break. And the Hawkeyes have been just under that 49 mark through two rotations, but the bars from BYU, they tie a season high as a team with a 49.225. They've done that twice before. Clearly their best event. And they equal that in front of the home crowd tonight. Now, a few weeks ago, we watched BYU compete against Utah State. Mikkel, you were not here. <laughs> no, I was not. But, but we saw Brittany Hawes mm -hmm. uh, competing with a kidney infection. She fell. 
Yes. And then Jesse Westergaard was also out with an illness, so two of their main competitors under the weather. You can see what a difference health makes as BYU, after two rotations, is up with a score of 98.225 to Iowa's 97.925. It is so, it's so important to have good backup for when, our coach used to always say, you're going to get a chance. Ever, someone's gonna get sick, someone's gonna get hurt. Gymnastics has about 100% injury rate. So you're going to have a chance to get to compete, but you can see how, yes, how important those consistent lineups are. Beam lineup for the BYU Cougars in rotation number three coming in just moments. Miller, Mara Diaga, Hill and Pearson, one, two, three, four, respectively, Jill Van Mirlo and Natasha Trejo, who has become a well-deserved anchor in that sixth spot on this event. She, she has the body language of confidence, and this has been the event that really has snuck up on BYU this season when things are going well. This has been their Achilles heel. Yeah, beam is just hard. It's skinny. You have to do crazy things on it. Things that people can't do on the floor, you're asking these gymnasts to do on a very skinny beam that's four feet yeah. in the air. Four feet in the air, four inches wide. Yeah, no four less. inches wide. There's just not a lot of room for mistakes. On the floor, if you're a little bit off, you can kind of compensate as you go. If you get even a little bit off on beam, it's just really hard to troubleshoot and pull it back on in time. Just saw that floor rotation for the University of Iowa. Chow, Sullivan, Metcalf, then Laney Snyder, Melissa Zorowski, and Claire Kaji. Iowa gearing up. There's the cheer before they begin the third rotation on the floor. And again, BYU on beam. Now, I do need to make a note of something I gave you a hard time about just a moment ago. You weren't here a couple of weeks ago because you were taking care of your brand new baby. Because I was having a baby. Congratulations, They're, they're by the so way. needy. They expect you to just, like, <laughs> raise them and stuff. <laughs> oh, there <laughs> no, are mothers all over here. the country right now <laughs> saying, I hope, she, I hope she's kidding and not seriously annoyed. <laughs> no, we love her. We're glad she's here. But congratulations Thank on you. that. Thank you. You bet. Hannah Miller to begin on beam for BYU. Beam is Hannah's favorite event, which is... I think is hilarious because I think it's terrifying. Um, but you can really see it. She looks really confident, which is what makes her a great leadoff competitor. The girls know, her teammates know she's going to hit. She looks really calm up there. Beam's a little bit different. The other events, you want a lot of energy. You want to be excited. Beam is more of a calm confidence type of event. You get too much adrenaline, it's really easy to launch yourself off there. Hannah Miller, freshman. Local product out of Farmington, Utah, about an hour north of Provo. Five-time Junior Olympic Nationals competitor. Which is a great accomplishment. For those of you that don't follow gymnastics, you have to qualify for nationals. And it's very difficult to qualify for nationals as a level 10 gymnast. So the fact that she's done it five times shows that she has a lot of experience. Hannah Miller with no major deductions in that routine. Wobble here and there, and a little bit of a hop on that dismount, but good opening for BYU on the beam. Very solid set, something that they can really build off of and be really proud of. While we await that score, to the floor now, and the University of Iowa. Nicole Chow, season and career best, 9.825. Iowa's floor tumbling passes have a lot of variety. Typically, we will just see, you know, you'll see some double backs, you'll see some front folds, some rooties. But notice tonight, as you're watching them, we're going to see some different things, which is kind of fun. It adds a lot of variety and something new to look at. Really solid landings tonight. On floor, we're going to be looking for not only the tumbling passes, we need to see the tumbling passes go both forward and backward to show that variety that the judges expect. So she did the double back for her back pass and then the front moves, her second pass was her front pass. We're going to be looking for 
twisting as well at some point in every girl's routine, either forward or backward. Leaps, jumps, connections, and toe turns are all required. A lot of times we get so caught up in the tumbling passes, we forget that they have to do their leaps and jumps and all their dance as well. Nicole Chow, sophomore, out of Canada, British Columbia. Oh yeah. Great landings. To end with a double back is very good. You'll see a lot of these more advanced teams mounting with the double back and ending with the double back. It shows a high level of fitness from these girls. Well, you like to build confidence early in a routine and that first pass should certainly have done it for Nicole Chow. And you know, that's how all of her landings look during this set. Solid, she knows exactly where she's at. Great air awareness. Sometimes it's really difficult when you go to a meet. All the floors are a little bit different. Sometimes they're a little bouncier. Sometimes they're fast. Sometimes they're slow. And there is an adjustment that needs to happen. She made that adjustment exceptionally well. Hannah Miller with a 9.7 to open things up on the beam. And that brings on Savannah Maradiaga. Sophomore out of Tyler, Texas. All around competitor. We saw her do an exhibition routine on the uneven bars. Great series there. We're going to be looking for each girl to do a series. That's typically the one we will see. It's called a flick lay. A series is just two acro skills, so two flips that are combined. Like floor, we'll be looking for leaps, jumps, and turns as well. Most of the girls will do a single toe turn, just kind of get rid of it, get it out of the routine, and then earn their bonus skills through their acro series and their leaps and jumps. Savannah has, does a dismount called a gainer full. It's a pretty common dismount, but her coaches have just been so impressed with how well she holds her shapes and just looks really good. Her amplitude and her shapes are fantastic. So we'll be looking for that on her dismount coming up. Savannah Maradiaga. And great stick. The team looks calm and confident. I get so nervous for Beam as a spectator watching, especially knowing how good that they've done on the previous two events. But they're handling the pressure really well. BYU's season high on Beam to this point is a 48.675 as a team. They have had to include consistently falls in this event. And so to get through the first two, and with that confidence and mojo working, if you will, yeah. this, uh, this is shaping up to potentially be a special night for BYU Gymnastics in this season. Charlotte Sullivan. Charlotte is one of the girls that has kind of different passes. She comes from the elite track. She's not going to do her typical back handspring, double back. You'll see there she goes, the front flip into the double back. Each girl is required to do a two flip pass. We don't see that front flip very often. I believe two of their girls compete that though to get their two flips in. Very difficult pass. Not quite the landing she was looking for. Again, that was a blind landing. Looks like she didn't quite know where to open up. It almost looked like she got caught a little bit in the air. Second competitor on the floor for Iowa, Charlotte Sullivan, and second from that international category, freshman out of New Zealand, as we mentioned earlier in the broadcast. Her bio and resume is very impressive. I mean, if you could win something in high school, she, she won it, <laughs> including the New Zealand Nationals, four out of five years. Coming to college with that kind of experience is something that a coach just dreams of. She's already used to the high-pressure environment that college can bring. Charlotte Sullivan. Sprints off the floor. We'll take a look at some of her teammates who are throwing chalk with her. <laughs> You'll see Charlotte only does two tumbling passes. That's totally fine. That would be why she does. Most gymnasts do the three. It allows you to get your bonus in your tumbling passes. That's why she does her front flip 
into the double back. That counts as her two, pa two flip pass and also as her front pass and her back pass. She's just very efficient with her, the tumbling passes that she chose. Look at Savannah Mara Diaga. Career high, 9825. Cheyenne Hill! Cheyenne Hill, third to compete on beam for the Cougars. Guard Young has played with this rotation a lot, trying to find all the, all the rotations this season ha this season have been worked and worked and worked. Vault seems to be coming to a consistent rotation. All the other ones we're still seeing little alterations made. Cheyenne is coming back from a bone bruise injury that she got at the very beginning of the season, and all of the coaches just want her in lineup. She's an overall. Great gymnast, great performer, very consistent on everything that she does. Yeah, Guard Young trying to find that consistent lineup, as you mentioned, over all of the events. So far, so good on beam tonight for the Cougars. Huge connection, that's her front move, the kick over. Um, it connected to the jump. She's going to get bonus for that. The front move alone is very difficult though, that front kick over. Dismount from Cheyenne Hill. That's also a little bit more difficult of a dismount. It's hard to do a nice straight body position coming from a punch done on a four inch surface. Another These routines look at that are great first tonight. Aerial pass by Hill. And then the dismount. That's BYU just looks so calm and confident in their beam sets tonight. And I think it's really, whatever they're doing, it's working and it's great. Charlotte Sullivan, a 9.7, largely due to that big step she took in one of her passes. And here is Angel Metcalf. Did not disappoint on the uneven bars. And I don't anticipate she will do anything but put on a good show here on the floor. Big double pike to open. You'll notice she does not do a back handspring. It's not required. Often we will see the round off back handspring double back. That handspring kind of straightens you out after the round off, but some girls just prefer not to use it. It does make it easier as far as staying in bounds. Every time the girls touches that white carpet instead of the blue carpet, it's going to be one tenth off their score. So one foot out is a tenth, and if you take two full steps out, then that's two tenths. You betcha on that second pass, the senior out of Swansboro, North Carolina. So your teammates enjoying the routine with her as well. opportunities in Iowa's four routines. The judges are looking for that. They're looking for college. You can have more fun routines, but they are still looking for some aspects of artistry where we see the toe point. We see the girls upbringings as far as their ballet training, their dance training that all the club girls have to do. Angel Metcalf. Top 10 finish for her at the Big Ten Championships last year in the all-around. was that big first pass. And so much explosion. And then pass number two. You see, she does what's called a cowboy tuck, where you pull your knees to the side a little bit. Not a deduction, just a technique type of thing. Sometimes it makes it a little easier to pull. The double flip around. Great dance. This is an Iowa team that is very much deserving of their 17th ranking in the country. And they have put together some huge scores this season, hoping to do so again here in Provo. BYU continuing the trend of solid, calm confidence, a 9.8, which is a career high for Cheyenne Hill on the beam. So back-to-back -back career high performances for BYU on the balance beam with the second and third competitors, a 9.825 from Mara Diaga and a 9.8 from Cheyenne Hill. 
speaking of calm and carefree, that's exactly how Brianna's coaches describe her. They say she has this carefree personality, which is fabulous for me because the, co the pressure of competition doesn't seem to really get under her skin. It's just another routine that she's doing just like she's done in practice over and over again. Brianna, that aerial set. You did something fun with the girls. You had them write down notes about themselves. <laughs> you know, I wish I could take credit for that, but that was guard. <laughs> I've been laughing reading through some of them. They're great. So Brianna, it's hard not to notice uh, from her jotted down notes that she likes to be called Brianse. Brianse, she's fabulous. She makes it a habit to get in and out burger before the meets, whatever calms you down. <laughs> and Brianse with a clean routine for BYU, <laughs> still no falls through four on the beam for the Cougars. And it looks again like they are pacing for a team best in terms of this season as a score on the beam. Big dismount. These round off dismounts are very impressive. You have to be able to go aggressively enough to get the energy that you need to do your flip out of it, but controlled enough to stay on the beam. It's a little bit more of a dangerous dismount because you do have to go so aggressively for it, and there is more room for air. 9825 well. for Metcalf. Tying a rotation best from Nicole Chow, who opened things up with the 9825. And for the Hawkeyes, wow. Laney Snyder. Yeah, that was fantastic. Such a great opening. Another one of those different passes, the front flip into the double back, and then to that solid stick. On floor, you'll see she takes a step on that landing. That is allowed. It's called a lunge. There's no deduction for that. Floor is the only event you are allowed to take one step on and not be deducted. But if you can go without it, as she did on the first pass, it looks so impressive. And in a subjective sport like gymnastics, the more impressive you can look, the better off you're going to be. Little dab action right there. Some classic rock as her music choice. An appropriate song playing right now, given the color of Iowa's uniforms tonight. Mm -hmm. Black. with these landings. Such great control. Obviously knows exactly where she is. You can get a deduction if that <laughs> lunge is a little too big, so she doesn't even take the risk. She just doesn't move her feet at all. She was winning in this routine about two seconds into it. <laughs> the dancing was fun. And why not see the dab? There it is. I mean, really. In slow-mo. Final pass. This landing is just bonkers. bonkers. So good. Yes. So bonkers. good. The control that it takes to be able to do that and just the awareness and knowing where you're at and exactly when to open. It's incredible, really, that she's able to do that not only once but twice. I'm looking for new words tonight. I like you're it. using repulsion and I'm <laughs> using bonkers. I like but it. hey. Brianna Pearson with a 9.525. So that score in position to be dropped. Assuming the Cougars and Jill Van Mierlo can continue to hit clean routines on the balance beam. Van Mierlo, fifth competitor for Guard Young Squad. Jill does have a career high of 9925, so she is capable of putting up huge scores. And she's lucky enough this year that she's able to do the same routine as last year and just focus on really perfecting it. Freshman of the year in the Mountain Rim Gymnastics Conference in 2015. Battled through some injuries. You can see she's just really taking her time, doing one skill at a time. Beam's a lot about pacing. If you get going a little fast or get ahead of yourself, it's really easy to knock yourself off. I haven't seen a single deduction so far. The 
see a lot of these girls will do the side aerial on the beam. And just like floor, you're required to go forward and backwards. On beam, you are required to go forward and backward as well. That's why we'll see a lot of those side aerials, the front kick over. Sometimes we'll see the round off dismount. That was a great set. This has been, in large part, a magical night for BYU <laughs> thus far. Has. They're doing great. This, I believe Jill was their fifth girl up, so they know they have five very countable scores right now. They are not going to have to count a fall on beam, regardless of what happens next with Natasha. Yeah, not to mention their best beam competitor coming up. Yes, and it takes so much pressure off her. Instead of having to compete not to fall, she's going to compete to win at this point. She has nothing to lose. Look at the score for Snyder. Wow. 9 9 well two, deserved. Five. Very, very good routine. You bet. They make the nearly impossible look very easy. Both of these teams <laughs> doing a very good job of that tonight. It's been a fantastic meet. Looking forward to an exciting finish as we near the end of rotation number three. These are great landings. Again, so we see impressed. this. So impressed. Again, we see that she doesn't do the, do the backhand spring. That's okay. And it makes it a little bit easier to stay in bounds. It's a smart move. There's her front pass so that we see with the twist. She's now already completed all of her tumbling requirements. She's gone backward, forward, twisting. So her last pass will strictly be for bonus at this point. energy routines. You'll see as they approach the corner, however, they are going to slow down, catch their breath, try and get a little bit of energy back before they have to complete their last pass. The routines are only 90 seconds, but they are an exhausting 90 seconds. Melissa Zorowski nearing the end of her floor routine, the junior out of Darien, Illinois. Set. They are doing so well on floor tonight. All their landings are so clean. Landings at this point in the season are very, very important. At that point, by now, hopefully you've cleaned up all your other little mistakes and you're just looking for perfection, and that's really what Iowa is showing tonight. Her career best, a 9.875 in this event. She'll likely flirt with a score like that tonight in Provo. But how about the landings consistently for Iowa, whether it be on vault, uneven bars, or on the floor? I mean, the majority have been very, stuck. Very, very good landings. That's definitely one of their strengths as a team. They've obviously worked very hard on those. Score in from Jill Van Mirlo, a 9.85 on the balance the beam. beam. So Natasha, Natasha Ooh, Trejo now. A little now. bit lower than I would like to see from Coach Ma from Judge McKell. Okay. But I guess we'll take it. <laughs> I should have asked you on that I one. No, I would have. I would have ruined my streak though. <laughs> That's true. Ah, that was a calculated <laughs> move not to bring it up. <laughs> I'm even more impressed. Natasha Trejo looking to finish out. A very good beam routine. I feel like I'm a broken record tonight with this BYU squad. In each rotation, they are putting together season best scores as a team. And given a major gaffe right here, I think even with a fall, they'll still have their team best score because they could drop it. Yes, for sure. There's, there's nothing that can go wrong really at this point as far as the scoring goes. It can only go up from here. And that's got to make you feel as the anchor just rock solid in your routine, knowing that you can go out there and just perform loose, big. have yes. some fun, yeah. And as we see, everything she's doing is flawless. She did that big acro series that we talked about earlier with a jump in front of it, so that's extra bonus. She did the front move with the jump for bonus. That was a huge set. This is unbelievable. BYU has to be so proud of themselves tonight so far. 
There's that front back move. She does a great job connecting it. Sometimes when your acro series goes forward to backward, it is difficult to get the connection. She was very, very solid on that. Great dismount. This BYU team is pacing for a season best score in a meet and not just by a little. I mean, they are set with a solid foraging to and this is what they've rush. Been, yes, this is what they've been capable of all season because they don't have, you know, their one girl that falls every time. Wow, Zorowski. Nice. Another well-deserved score, 9.9. .9. Iowa making a major push here in this head-to-head -head meet in rotation number three. They trailed by three-tenths after two rotations but with uh, two nine nines in that rotation and still potentially one here. And with their sixth girl up, they're in the same position. I was in the same position BYU was just moments ago. They can't lose here. They already have five great scores. Claire Kaji. Claire opens with that full in. A full in is a very difficult pass. Gymnastic scores are, gymnastic skills are rated A to E based on difficulty level. A being the easiest, E being the most difficult. The full in is rated an E. It's one of the more difficult passes you could throw. Another one of those variety type passes that we don't see very often, the back one and a half, step out into more tumbling. It's more of an elite type pass. We just don't see it in college very often, but it's still a very acceptable and very impressive pass. Slowing down here, getting ready for that final pass. Mm. Great landings all, all night, just like you said earlier. Great landings from Iowa, very consistent. Iowa as advertised, top 20 team nationally out of the Big Ten, number 17 this week. <laughs> and they have absolutely killed it on the floor as a team. We might have three nine nines in this rotation from Iowa. That's very possible. Looking at a recap of this Iowa team, we're talking about a squad that is coming off a season low, 194.2 in that tri meet at LSU. I believe right now, also, that's counting. 194 is not a low score by any means, but that's counting toward their RQS. So assuming they keep doing what they're doing tonight, they'll be able to count this score and drop the 194 and possibly move up even further in rankings. Shannon's really been working beam on just slowing down, taking her time. She's a very fast, aggressive beam worker which is good, it's good to be aggressive, but it's also can send you off the beam pretty fast as well. So she's working on just taking her time, slowing down, learning to breathe a little bit. Shannon Hortman, that exhibition routine. Let's keep it rolling with that confidence factor. You gotta like what Guard Young's trying to do here. As he is cinching down those rotations, the later the BYU moves in to the 2017 campaign, Sydney Hogan will have an exhibition on the floor for the Hawkeyes. Iowa's season high is 196.475. They did on, that on February 11th in a Big Ten head-to-head -head meet with Illinois. See, they, that was a try meet with UIC as well, but hey, they're capable. Great score, yeah. We might even see something a little bit higher tonight. We'll have to see how the next event works out. But they're doing just phenomenal work tonight. Oh, you see how close she got to that white carpet. Just like we talked about earlier, you do not want to touch it. She knew exactly where it was and kind of hopped in. Very smart move by her. That 
final pass. Oh, she's another two passer. The so fewer skills you can actually do, the better, because then you're just giving fewer things to be deducted on. So if you can get away with not doing extra stuff unnecessarily, then that's great. Exhibition routine over on the floor through three rotations. We will give you the updated scores when we come back. It is deadlocked between Iowa and BYU. BYU Gymnastics on BYU TV is brought to you by Smith Auto Company, a family tradition since 1924. Deseret First Credit Union, sharing your values. And by DexterLaw.com for help when you need it most. Welcome back to Provo, Utah, NCAA Women's Gymnastics. And it has been fantastic tonight. 17th ranked Iowa and BYU. A reminder, if you want up-to-date news and information on all things BYU sports, then you need to be watching or listening to our national simulcast, BYU Sports Nation. Every weekday, noon Eastern, 10 a.m. Mountain Time. The show also on demand. Download the podcast on iTunes or the TuneIn app. Check out BYUtv.org for the latest. Join myself and Jerem Jordan for all things BYU sports. Huge weekend ahead for BYU with the men's and women's basketball teams taking on Gonzaga. And, of course, gymnastics tonight against 17th-ranked Iowa. Our game summary presented by Deseret First. Deseret First, your values, your timeline, your financial future. BYU will drop the 9525 from Brianna Pearson and score a season best on beam, 49.050. That's five-tenths better than the previous season high so great. on beam. Iowa on floor, not to be outdone. Put up a 49.350, including a couple of 9-9 routines. That's and Claire Kaji finished things up with a 9-8-7-5. That is a very impressive score. When the lowest score you're counting is a 9-8-2-5, you had a great rotation. Going into the final rotation, calculating the scores, that means the teams are deadlocked. 147.275. BYU had a three-tenths advantage after two rotations. Iowa, despite BYU's 49.050 on beam, with that great, great rotation, are now even with the Cougars. We go to the beam for Iowa. And look at the rotation for the 17th-ranked Hawkeyes. On beam, it will be Borman, Sullivan, Claire Kaji, who just put up a 9.875 on floor, is competing third on beam. Yaud, Murrah, and Angel Metcalf. This is her specialty event. And the Hawkeyes looking to earn it in a big way on the road here in this head-to-head -head meet with BYU. The Cougars, meanwhile, move to the floor. And on the floor for BYU, Brianna Pearson to jump things out for BYU, followed by Natasha Trejo, Jill Van Mirlo in the three spot, Shannon Hortman competing fourth on floor, Mackenzie Douglas, number five, and Kylie Greenleaf. We will see her for the first time tonight in that anchor role on floor for the Cougars and Guard Young. Here we go, Mikkel, final rotation. Mm -hmm. What do you anticipate from uh, Iowa and BYU? on the beam and floor respectively. You know, they both have scored very high on both those events. Iowa has a 49.3 high on beam. She are doing great tonight. We talked earlier about how easy it is to keep doing well once you're already doing well. Greatness begets greatness. So I'm expecting to see good things from both of teams. I'm really excited. BYU meeting as a team. Center of the floor. The seven in the rotation, including one exhibition for the Cougars. Savannah Borman is on the beam, leading things off for the Hawkeyes. Beam is a little bit harder to end on because it is kind of that wild card event. You can be doing really well and then go downhill really fast. So while they are probably very excited coming off that great floor, 
performance. They're going to have to make sure they've calmed it down. Like we talked about earlier, very calm confidence is what we're looking for on Beam. Borman, senior out of Chesapeake, Virginia, transfer via Arizona State University. She looks very, very confident. Has great form on that flick, flick lay. That's a great, to be able to do a three skill series pass is very impressive. It shows a lot of experience. Borman. A great opening set. Yeah, that might be an understatement for this Hawkeyes <laughs> team. You can see the confidence has carried over with them from the floor to the beam as well. This is a lot of fun. This is high level gymnastics and both of these teams have been outstanding tonight. When that is your opening set, it makes you feel so confident because again, the goal is to build each time. So she's, I imagine, going to get a very good score. And so if we can just keep building on those scores, they will have a record night for Beam as well. Pearson, season and career best 985 on the floor. Despite Pearson's freshman status, she has she's exceedingly consistent and just very confident. The girls know she's going to hit, which is why she is currently in the opening spot. She's actually talked to Brogan about the possibility of moving back, but she's just so consistent that the girls really rely on her. It's such a confidence boost for the team knowing that she's gonna go up, hit her set, and then the next four girls just need to do their job as well. Beautiful Rudy there. On our tumbling passes that the girls are doing here, we're looking for on their landings, not only to be sticking the landings, but to have their chest up as they land. Grand did a great job of that on that second pass. She'll be looking to do the exact same thing here on the last pass. Opening competitor for BYU on the floor in the final rotation. Anna Hortman. start for BYU. Excuse me, Brianna Pearson. I called, I mixed her name with <laughs> Shannon Hortman. You see, she has that mat in the corner. A lot of gymnasts will do that. Not a deduction. You can have a four inch or a sting mat there. Just protects their ankles a little bit. You'll see a lot of these girls, their ankles are wrapped pretty thickly mid season. Solid finish for Pearson. Leading things off for the Cougars on the floor. She awaits her score. And we will take a look at the opening score now for Borman of Iowa, 9-8-2-5. And she'll give way to Charlotte Sullivan. Savannah Borman, impressive start and score for the Hawkeyes on beam. Another one of those front to back series. Did a great job connecting it. That aerial is very difficult because not only is it a blind landing, but it's a blind landing to one foot. If you're off a little bit, that other foot's not there to compensate. Yeah! Skills a little bit different, it's called a side summy. It's similar to the aerial, except it does land sideways. It's a little bit easier to get off. Um, just because if your weight is back, you're going to fall right off the beam, whereas on that side aerial, your weight is over the beam. Oh, man. Solid sets. Uh, we shouldn't be surprised at this point, should we? <laughs> no, they're doing it. Like, these landings are crazy.
Look at that side summy. You can see how easy it would be to get off on that, but she handles it beautifully. And the dismount with there's a that stick. Yeah, there's that round off dismount again that we talked about earlier. More difficult dismount. You have to go aggressively, but still straighten your body out with the double twist. She was able to see exactly where the floor was before she even got there. Brianna Pearson with a 9.8 for BYU in that opening floor routine. Charlotte Sullivan, we anticipate a very good score for her on beam for Iowa in that number two spot. Natasha's going to open with a fancy kind of turn here. Right there. The way gymnastics floor works is you have to have, uh, you have to either compete two Ds or one E. Most gymnasts opt for the two Ds in their tumbling passes. Natasha does two Ds. She does the first one in her turn, the second one her double back. They like to get that double turn right out of the way so they're camp, she's not tired for it and minimize her deductions on it. Her heel hit that back line, so that will be a deduction on that first pass. Sorry, scoot just a little bit. It was so close, too. So close again. Flag did not go up from what I could tell on that second pass, signifying a deduction. So clean through the second. Coaches can just never say enough good things about Natasha. They always talk about how she's just such a hard worker and a great example, and they just feel like she is the perfect representation of what a BYU athlete should represent. Just to a rendition of Disney music. <laughs> she's like their very own little Disney princess. Natasha Trejo. You can see just how close this was on the first pass. Her heel scooting back, trying to hang uh. on, and just got it. Flag goes up. Showing that deduction, you can see Shannon Hortman, her teammate, looking at the judge like, she didn't go out. <laughs> it, was so, it was such a minimal out of bounds that it was almost, it would have been easy to miss. Charlotte Sullivan, 9.875, ties her career high on the balance beam. We have said the words career high. So many times a tonight. A lot tonight. This has been a great meet. Mm. Claire Kaji. I'm impressed with how solid they look on their series. There's no doubt in their minds. You can see as they're doing their beam routines, they're not going in hoping like, oh, I hope I don't, I hope I make this. They know they're going to make it and they know they're going to make it well. There's that front aerial again, a very difficult move to the one foot. It's such a pretty move. On the lead passes, the judges are looking to see a complete 180 degree split. If they are not able to hit that nice straight line with their legs, that is a deduction. A gainer off. The beam as a dismount. And Kaji nails her routine. You see, she just looks solid. Gainer off the end is not a dismount that you see very often either. It's more of a fun, different variety of a dismount. It's a little bit scary because you're going Traveling forward, but flipping backwards. Trejo scores a 9.525 for BYU because of that step violation. She went out of bounds on her first tumbling pass. 
So now it's Jill Van Merle looking to score big for BYU. I have been laughing all week about, is it called a Heisman's pose? The Heisman stance? What did yes, she just the, do? The Heisman pose. The Heisman and pose. This is to the Fox NFL theme music, football. <laughs> well, apparently after every single meet, a male fan, some gentleman will approach Jill and tell her she's doing the Heisman pose incorrectly. <laughs> so Jill's been researching it. And now I looked it up, and I can see why she's confused. Because on the trophy, <laughs> the foot is down, but in the pictures, the foot is up. Right? I feel like cut her some slack. She's doing pretty darn good. OK, well, we can, we can <laughs> set the record straight with Jill. So far, so good in this floor routine. Jill's been moving around a lot this season in the floor lineup, trying to find where she best fits. Originally, they had her opening for the floor team just because she has such a high energy exciting routine they wanted to make sure that she could start off strong and get the team pumped up but they found that she's just scored a little better by moving back in line up a smidge she finishes it off with a tebow move <laughs> A football-themed floor routine for Jill Van Mierlo. Here's a look at the first pass. The core power is unbelievable. Great, Rudy, there, landing tiny, tiny bit out of control. She was able to cover that up pretty well, though, with the step back. Might be a slight deduction. She's so consistent. I feel like when I watch Jill perform on floor, I just am planning on her hitting and doing a great job which we talked about earlier, we can really use her and her expertise as a junior. She's just... Yeah, not much experience when you look at this BYU roster. She certainly is yeah. one of the few upperclassmen. Nikki Yaud awaiting the okay from the judges to take to the balance beam. And thus far, this rotation for Iowa has been every bit as impressive as their floor routine was. They scored a 49.35, which is really, really good if you're not familiar with gymnastics scores as a team and have been so consistent and impressive on the balance beam and doing so in this final rotation. So much pressure as the road team on this event to do this. And speaking of being the road team, it's it's tiring. These guys have flown in. They had a they had two meets last week, I believe. It's tiring. Mid-season, you're tired, you're worn out. You're just here to kind of do your job at that point. Coach Libby actually says that she likes it as season goes on because competing becomes monotonous. At the beginning of season, your adrenaline is pumping and you're still trying to figure out how to compete. But by mid-season where we are now, that's not only do you have the experience, but it's just not as crazy exciting to be competing. It's just another competition on another weekend. It allows you to really focus on your gymnastics instead of the competition itself. You mentioned the two meets last week for this Iowa team. They put up a 196.4 in a meet with five teams at George Washington. They won that, but then they had to turn around two days later as you look at the celebration <laughs> continue after another great beam routine. The latest coming from Nikki Yowd. It's tough to turn around two days later, continuing on that thought, Mikkel, and go on the road, another try meet. They put up the 194.2, so fatigue certainly had to factor into that, you would think. It's hard because in gymna gymnastics is already kind of hard because it's not consistent. You have an adrenaline rush, and then you settle down before the next event. And you have another adrenaline rush, and then you settle down over and over. And in college, where you feel like your teammates are you, you kind of do that for each of your teammates as well. Scorebox sponsor tonight, Brady Industries, provider of commercial cleaning supplies and equipment throughout the western United States for over 65 years. Brady Industries Clean Solutions, a tradition for generations. Jill Van Mierlo scores a 9.75 as the third competitor on floor for BYU. Shannon Hortman with a season and career best as a freshman of 9.9. Coach Brogan mentioned that she's just been really working on her landings. In gymnastics, you can be more of a fill the landing type of gymnast or where you fill, I've flipped twice and now I need to open. Or you can be a see the landing type of gymnast where you see the floor and then you open. Shannon's been working really hard on switching from a fill the landing gymnast to a see the landing gymnast to work on her consistency. 
5'2 freshman out of nearby American Fork, Utah. Super fun routine. Of course, fun, you get to show off a little more of your personality, let loose a little bit. Well, she's not short on personality off the floor. <laughs> So, fun fact about Shannon is you hear the Jaws music. She actually hates sharks. <laughs> so that's a calculated move by her to put something like that in this routine. a good job on that last pass of just having a totally open body. Sometimes on that front layout, we'll see a pike followed by a little bit of an arch. Her body's very locked out the entire time, leading to no deductions on that. First pass from Hortman. You can see why she's focusing a little more on those landings. The rest of her routine is great. There's really very little that she can be deducted on, but her landings are a little bit more questionable. With some experience, Shannon's only a freshman. With some experience, that's going to get very solid. We're going to see some big scores coming from her in the future. That final pass looked pretty good in terms of the landing for Shannon Hortman. Big smile on her face. And back to a look of concentration. And now a grin from Lexi Mura. The last score for Iowa on the beam was a 9.925 by Yowd, which crushes her career best. Oh, oh and there is the first fall on the beam. Now, Iowa's still in good shape, given that Murrah is the fifth competitor here, and they have yet to fall on this event. But the pressure will mount for the anchor on the balance beam, Angel Metcalf. But who would you rather have anchoring than your senior right. leader, Metcalf, coming up in number the number six spot? It does put definitely more pressure on her, but she has been primed to, she's ready for that pressure. It's probably not something that she hasn't had in the past. Lexi's job here is just to finish up really strong in case Angel does fall, and she's done a great job with that. A stick landing after that nice, fall. Nice stick landing. Yeah. It's been the theme of the match for the <laughs> Iowa Hawkeyes. But another look at that fall. Her feet looked okay initially. You know, it looked like her chest when she just picked her chest up. Because, yeah, her feet are really square. But, again, that beam is so skinny. So when she picked her chest up, she just pulled it tiny, tiny bit to the left. And it was just enough to throw her off. She's a very powerful thrower. She throws a flick lay very powerfully, which is good. It looks great, but it doesn't allow for as much air. Shannon Horner with a 9.85. Good score for BYU, the highest of this rotation. And that brings on Mackenzie Douglas, who I called earlier bouncy. And this is the <laughs> event that will profile that and then some. Pike. She typically opens with a full in, which is a huge pass, as we talked about earlier. However, she did hurt her ankle earlier this week and has not been able to put in the numbers. I'm sure her coaches are just trying to protect that ankle a little bit as well. Still a lot of season left. They've got to be careful with these girls. Her amplitude is so crazy. Ridiculous. We talk about it every meet. Everything she does is just so high with the tumbling. She's a competitor that had the same floor routine for eight years. Eight years. I'm sure she was really excited to get this one. It suits her so much better, I feel like. Very powerful as she is. Brogan was really excited for her to have this routine because she just loves Disneyland and Pirates of the Caribbean. Mackenzie Douglas. Great set from Doug. 
She wants to be the president of the United States. She's enjoying the attention from her teammates <laughs> right now. And one more look at just how high she gets in this first pass. And she knows exactly where that landing is as well. Doug is another girl that can do the stick without having to take a step if she really works that. Great landings. All right, Mackenzie Douglas awaits her score. Mura after that fall with a 9.3, so it comes down to Angel Metcalf, who, oh, by the way, has a season best on the balance <laughs> beam of a 9.925. She tends to thrive in these type of situations, and Iowa needs her now. Angel's another one of the girls competing the three skill series. As we talked about earlier, that looks a little more impressive. It adds to your bonus. It just sets you one step higher as an advanced gymnast. Beautiful lead pass, really great form. Wow, triple afro series. Very clean. She has pretty back handsprings. Sometimes the back handsprings, they split in funny spots. I feel like that's exactly how your back handsprings should look, is how Angel performs them. Just what Iowa needed, Angel Metcalf. We'll see here how tight her legs are. It really shows off that full split that the judges are looking for. And again, look at her split in that. Just knees look fabulous. Bend. And she does such a good job of achieving the good form and the great shaping. Metcalf doing what she has done so often in the clutch. And they needed it because Mackenzie Douglas comes in with a 9.9 .9 on floor following up Portman's 9.85. So BYU trying to make a late push here in this meet. Kylie's placement at the end is very calculated. She is new to the lineup, which makes her a little bit of a wild card. This way, it doesn't put any pressure on her. She, she can go out. She knows that the first five have already hit. She can just go out and enjoy her first experience competing here on floor at the Smithfield House. Kylie's always been one of the best athletes in the gym, but has kind of had a hard time transferring that to the competition setting. But she really had great pass. She really just had a turnaround, turning point a few weeks ago in Texas when guard told her, just pretend you are back at practice. Literally visualize the mirrors. Say, now I'm tumbling toward the mirrors. Now I'm tumbling toward the resi pit. And that has just really helped her. And she's been very consistent since. Phantom of the Opera. around them. Often gymnasts will drop their shoulders, which le leads to a lower front flip. She has great amplitude because she keeps her front shoulders up on her front pass and flips around them. Slowing down here, getting ready for this final pass. It looks like that. The visualizing technique really helped because that was a great set again. Kylie Greenleaf. Kylie Greenleaf. As you mentioned, the new envisioning technique <laughs> that Guard Young gave to her. Boy, that last pass. She almost started on that thicker mat. Yeah, that's not ideal. She probably would have been able to figure it out. It does take a little bit of your bounce away if you do hit it, and it kind of surprises you. It's an easy way to hurt your ankles as well, just because of the angle that your feet hit. Right, no Shoot. real harm done. Smile on her face, and hey, in that number six spot, got to be feeling relief and some confidence after delivering there. 
exhibition routine now on the balance beam. And I'll let you finish that thought while we watch this. I was just going to say, she definitely showed that she's ready to be in lineup. When there's an opening in lineup, I'm sure that she will be there ready to take it. And like we talked about earlier, there's you, the gymnasts are always going to get their chance to compete. And it's whether you're ready for that chance or not that determines if you're going to be competing. Both of these teams will score in the 196 range tonight. Just awaiting Greenleaf's final tally. That is a huge series that we just saw. We were talking earlier about how the flick flick lay is very impressive. It's a three skill series. She just did a flick lay lay. So the backhand spring and then two more backhand springs but just without her hands. Very, very hard. Different little jump. I don't even know what that'd be called, to be honest. It's kind of fun to see. That's what I'm talking about. Iowa has a lot of variety in their routines. They seem to really take the time to figure out what looks best on which girl, what they compete the best. Great set. And that's the exhibition. Iowa showing their depth tonight. A little bit of a slow start for the Hawkeyes. Still good, but just not as fantastic as the third as the and fourth rotation. Holy yes. cow. Now we do have a note. The Iowa coaches were arguing something and were visibly displeased about something. We're not sure on the details, so we're looking into that to see if it's going to have any sort of effect on the scores here. Woo. Cheyenne Hill with that exhibition routine on floor for BYU. You see her bounce, knocked her right out of bounds. Again, Cheyenne's just coming back from that bone injury at the beginning, that bone bruise from the beginning of season. As her body heals and she gains more experience, where you can expect to see her contribute just more and more. Brogan says that by her junior year, we should expect to see her just be a standout performer. Now to give you an idea of the 196 score, teams that can average a score of 196 on a regular basis, now you're talking about top 10 quality. Yes. And yeah. that's what, I think that's why guard has been a little bit frustrated because this is, these are the performances that BYU is capable of. It's just so hard to get it consistent and be hitting it like they can. I think it's going to be a really big confidence boost, though, for the young gymnasts, the young team, to see what they're capable of. And it's only midseason, and they still have a lot of time to keep competing and keep getting these great scores. If you could score 195 consistently, you're a top 25 program nationally. Yes, which BYU is definitely more than capable of. Clearly, as we have seen tonight, both of these teams up in the 196 region, we will get the official tally and give that to you in just a moment. Razor thin margins separating these two squads all night. They were deadlocked after three rotations. Iowa went to the beam, BYU to the floor. Either way, both of these teams, their staffs are going to be pleased with the overall performance tonight. While we have a moment, we remind you that tomorrow afternoon, our regular season West Coast Conference finale of women's basketball taking place in the Marriott Center. BYU will host the perennial conference power, Gonzaga, for Eastern two Mountain time. BYU looking to avenge an ugly early season loss in Spokane, a place they still have never won since joining the West Coast Conference six years ago by beating the Zags on their home floor in Provo. Big one for sure. Tomorrow, 4 Eastern, 2 Mountain. Join myself for Kristen Kozlowski on the call. Again, awaiting the official final scores here. Unofficially, Iowa scored a 49.225 on the balance beam in that final rotation. And BYU looks like a 49.150 on the floor. 
which would give Iowa a very, very slim victory over BYU head to head. But wow, I mean, we're talking about 196. Point four, I point say, five. No, I don't think guard's going to be too sad about the loss. And with that, you're certainly into the top 10 territory. And we'll take a look at the performance of the meet. We see Elian Kulchik, one of those BYU seniors who had to have her career cut short early because of injury. But the performance of the meet belongs to Snyder of Iowa on the floor. I mean, this was an electric just, yeah. routine. It's going to be very hard for her to top this as the season goes on. I'm excited to see how she does the rest of the year. Laney Snyder scoring a 9-9-2-5. Every 10th, 100th really counts. <laughs> It really does, especially as you get into the more advanced teams. It comes down to half a tenth sometimes, sometimes even less, as to who goes on and who doesn't come nationals. Final tallies now have gone official on the beam. For the 17th ranked Iowa Hawkeyes, it is a 49.225. They dropped the 9.3 by Murrah after her fall. And that will give the Hawkeyes a 196.5 overall. BYU, total of 49.15 after Greenleaf's 9.775. They dropped Trejo's 9.525. BYU scores 49 plus in all four rotations. Such a great accomplishment. Again, so much confidence building happening tonight. If you can do it at one meet, then you know that you can do it in the future meets. Look at that final score. BYU with a 196.425. And they don't even lose by a tenth. No. A quarter, yeah. Three quarters of a tenth separating these teams through the final rotation. Both teams understandably pleased, thrilled, really, if you're BYU with a new season high score of 196.425, which is, I think, more than a full point better. I was gonna almost say, a I full feel point like... better than their previous season at 195.45, so not quite, but. So unfortunately, they will not be able to count this score toward their RQS. The high score is dropped, but that does allow them to count the 195 that they were dropping beforehand. Unless, of course, they put up a 196 again. Next week. Next week. <laughs> Perfect. It's that simple, right? Or not. <laughs> Final tallies tonight. Iowa wins by a hair over BYU head-to-head, -head, but both teams competing at a very high level. Tune in tomorrow for women's basketball. BYU and Gonzaga. Coverage starts at 4 Eastern, 2 Mountain Time, live from the Marriott Center. We enjoyed it and hope that all of you did as well tonight here in the Smithfield House and watching worldwide on BYU TV for Mikkel Merkley and every member of our elite crew. I am Spencer Linton saying good night from Provo. We'll see you tomorrow on BYU TV.